Oh. Hello, welcome to Back Pocket and the Back Podcast, Australia's favourite podcast, as voted on by us, the hosts of the Back Podcast, Australia's favourite gaming podcast. It's Monday, the 4th of July, 2022. I'm Nick Richardson, and today I'm joined by Peter, Peter Burns. Very human over here. And uh, she's a hot potato with plenty of bangers and mash. It's Lucy L. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now, <laughs> Great introduction. Well, I need to, uh, I, the audience must get sick of hearing this, but every, I need to explain it every time. Uh, I just steal the intro for our guests from your Twitch About page. And most yes, of them I don't <laughs> describe themselves as hot straight up. And so literally like one of the first sentences I've said to you is commenting on your <laughs> potato appearance. And I'm very sorry for that. It's fine. It's fine. I get it all the time. Uh, Lucy, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for for the people who are watching who don't know you, and I would say that you are one of, ironically, the most recognizable streamers in Australia. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely not confusing you with anybody else. Uh, could you tell That's us a little true. bit about yourself and uh, and what you stream? Um, I, I obviously am a potato. Um, not all the time. I, I only started doing the potato about like half a year ago. Mm -hmm. I was a full face, face cam streamer, just a woman on Twitch. That was it for like the long, for like four years. And then I randomly one day wanted to do a, uh, no cam stream because I was sick of doing my makeup for an hour. And I, um, just randomly picked a potato and chat loved it. And so now we've just gone full dive in potato first because it's super easy and so now i'm just full-time potato mm -hmm. um and uh i stream i stream lots of different games i may mostly a minecraft main minecraft is kind of my my gig i love minecraft but also recently i've been really into fortnite we've been playing lots of um like sims and house flipper and all sorts of that anything i can be creative really because i'm a real creative person mm. so anything where i can build something massive or recreate something from a tv show that's my jam really i just have so, this yeah. origin story picture of you sitting in front of a vanity and like the, the 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 mirrors all lit up and in the background is like a warped version of uh the wiggles hot potato hot potato playing you know yeah. hot <laughs> potato hot potato and you're sitting there and you're like you go to put your makeup on and you realize you're sick of it and then you just start rubbing dirt all over your mm. face yeah. mm. <laughs> just hot snap. potato yeah. hot potato <laughs> it puts the dirt on the skin <laughs> yeah <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly what it was like. Yeah, that's cool. crazy that you even guessed that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. awesome, awesome. Um, I like that a lot of the things you play are games that are like uh, sort of simulations for what people do in real life, like flippant houses, yep. sim style thing, like lots of aspirational things, which most people are like, well, I aspire to one day have a house this beautiful that I can build, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I aspire to one day be a person who can then have a house and yeah, yeah. exactly uh it's it's yeah. beautiful uh but uh, you're uh, we've raided you a couple of times you've been uh, a streamer that like every time you're on i will definitely click and just be like what is lucy up to today because oh. you're you're <laughs> a very entertaining streamer to watch even without the potato um and uh it's it's always a joy to just like it's a chill vibe so if anyone is not watching you on twitch uh they should be after this and, and we're very happy to have you here for the show uh, you so Pete, much. you're also nice as well. Thank you, and I, I want to I want to uh, uh, call out someone else that's nice in the chat. Astro Please. underscore naught mm -hmm. made this beanie. Really? Like, well, yeah. Ooh. Uh, a, a pocketeer was promoting them in the creative uh, of Discord, Come so on. I jumped on Etsy and snapped up the uh, at the time last rainbow one. So. Uh, I'm, I'm sure more are being made, but uh, I, was, I felt lucky to get on for the last, the last multicolored beanie. It's and it's beanie. very cold at the moment, so it's it's serving me well. It's a good beanie. Uh, well done, astronaut, uh, for your excellent. Do you knit a beanie? Yeah, or maybe you will it yeah, into existence. Lucy, do you have any beanie experience? Um, I think you knit beanies for sure. Okay, I'm okay. pretty sure that's... I don't know how else you would uh, make a beanie. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, if only we had someone in chat who could tell us, but we don't, unfortunately. <laughs> crocheted. Uh, uh, crocheted? Isn't that just knitting? Is a crochet just fancy knitting? I let's, think it is, let's yeah. Be really, let's, be, let's be really fucking honest with ourselves right now, yeah. okay? <laughs> Are you just trying to make it sound like you're better than knitters? Like, crocheting yep. to me is something that people 
whom, like knitting is something that people over 70 do. And I just think crocheting is like, I've turned knitting into a business. And Made that's it all hip. that is. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Needlepoint, same bullshit. What is same, that? It's the same thing. Same <laughs> it's thing. just sewing in a random pattern. Sewing You're a yeah, sewer. Fancy sewing. Yeah. <laughs> sewing is just, sewing is just knitting with a sharper knit. Needle. Uh, knit. Yeah, knit whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Have we, I'm glad we sorted this out. This was the most important thing yep, that we needed yep. to uh, get on with today. Although we do have some video game to news, uh, to news to talk about. So, Pete, let's move on with the show because the news, it's not going to break itself. <laughs> the backup is presented by one of our Top Stitch patrons and the best evil person we know, Cardboard Cowboy. <sighs> you know why. You know what you did. You know why it's so difficult. And so does everyone on this call, but no one in chat does, and they'll never know. Uh, sorry, I mean Evil Spy Boy. Get your exclamation mark Spy Boys out in the chat, because thanks to his generous Patreon support, Evil Spy Boy is bringing you the backup today, and he's hoping you bring the generosity to Food Bank Australia. Lucy, I know you are food. This is not a direct hit at you. Please don't take this personally. Uh, food Bank provides regular breakfast to more than 132,000 students at schools across the country. And on top of this, more than 200,000 kids seek food relief from their charities every single month. Head to foodbank.org.au. Uh, there's a link in chat. Thanks to Nightbot right now. And head to tasteandmultifish.com for more information about Evil Spy Boy's proclivities. Okay, let's back up and look at the biggest stories of the week as voted on by us, the host of The Backup, where we back up and look at the biggest stories of the week. And Lucy, you are our guest today. So can you please start us off with a story that made you back up and say, hey, that's a pretty big story. Well, I was recently reading about uh, the Amazon show, The Boys. If anyone's, uh, are you guys fans of the show, The Boys? I am. Yes. I'm up to date. I'm not, I've only I am, watched the first season. You should definitely watch the new season. I'm halfway through the new season. I haven't had time to finish it, but um, I love that show. It's uh, such a refreshing take on, um, like superhero things because whenever i find myself watching like marvel movies i'm like well, i wonder what happens like there's got to be a dark version of this where superheroes just uh, uh like like people are people you know like there's got to be a, a twisted side to this and i really think that it's an amazing show it's so good and they're saying that uh potentially uh hideo kojima who of course makes metal gear solid and 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 death stranding is uh, potentially going to make a video game of the boys is what they're talking about. Um, which I think would be just that a video game would be amazing. I don't know how they would get around the, you know, how everything it's, 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 it's a very intense show. If anyone's seen it, it's very mm. violent. It's very, um, very sexual. There's a lot, there's a lot. It's, it's very uh, intense. So I don't know how they would be able to make it exactly like the show, but um yeah, that would be that would be crazy. I would I would love that. Yeah, so he he tweeted out that he had been uh, he watched a couple of episodes of The Boys and then turned it off. He didn't explain why, but I assume he disgust <laughs> because he was angry that it was actually a lot like an idea that he had for a game. And then mm -hmm. he said, "Well, I'm not going to make that game anymore." And then the showrunner and uh, the the guy who plays um, Homelander, the the lead villain in the show. Uh, basically then responded to him and was like, no, let's team up and make a boys video game. That will be sick. We've wanted to turn it into a game and we're huge fans. And like really asking for something that I think they, that no one actually wants to work with Kojima. I think it's brilliant, <laughs> but like, you don't want to hand your IP over to Kojima. No. Like that's, no. that's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I loved the idea that like, cause Kojima is one of these developers where Obviously, Metal Gear is the biggest thing that he is known for. Uh, and we've had Death Stranding. He's working on something new at the moment. But it, it's often felt like he returns to the same well. He has oodles of creativity, but like he's been making Metal Gear for decades. And so the idea that he has these other game ideas sort of floating around his head that he's just never had an opportunity to explore is exciting to me because the thing I kind of want the most from Kojima is is smaller and more as opposed to just like huge epic massive games that like drag on forever uh because he is brilliant in so many ways and yeah i think the boys pete you're a big boys fan as well how would how would you feel because i know how you feel about kojima yeah. yeah i think he would i think he would soak all the fun out of the boys the boys is successful because of how quickly it moves yeah. it's like the concept is not particularly like like you said at the start lucy it's like we we're waiting for this to happen like there was always going to be the counterpoint to the marvel cinematic universe mm -hmm. of look how shiny and good these people are 
And, you know, we saw a couple of films like uh, Brightburn, I think it was called, like what if Superman was bad, that kind of stuff that are also self-serious. And I think they're unsuccessful because of that, where the boy succeeds is that it is uh, a parody yeah. First and foremost, uh, it's got really good writing and really good characters of its own, but it the plot moves fast, um, particularly in the later seasons, kind of now that it's found its own feet. Uh, there's yeah. there's a significant plot movement every episode, mm-hmm. and Kojima is not about <laughs> moving plot forward quickly. <laughs> he is about drawing out plot to the point that you're like, I think he's kind of like... um uh seth mcfarlane in that like a joke he tells a joke so often that it becomes uh, like it loses its sense of humor and then it's funny again because it's like the absurdity that it's still going the the absurdity Mm -hmm. that death stranding continues is what kojima is about the absurdity that metal gear solid has two and a half hour cutscenes is what that's what kojima is all about um (laughs) so i just don't they're not they're not a Pair, they're not a match made in heaven. I like Dolphin <laughs> yes. Pants in the chat said, but guys, imagine the batshit insane heroes Kojima will create. And I'm definitely on board with that. Like he would come mm. up with some weird uh, stuff. Uh, Lucy, are you, a, are you a Kojima fan? Do, do you like Metal um, Gear or Death I've, Stranding? No, I'm not. Per- I've seen a lot of stuff about Death, Death Stranding. I've seen um, a lot of discussion about it over the years, but I haven't uh, actually played it myself or watched a lot of game footage of it. Mm. Um, I do like the art style though. Very... Very high def. I like that. Um, the uh, <laughs> like Death Stranding is a, like the gameplay. I, I really don't like, but the just the world building is very exciting. And yeah, mm. I, I mean, I just like the idea that uh, that he, like I said, he has these ideas, and I also like that the the showrunner was basically like, "Help make this happen." That would be cool. At least putting it out there. And Kojima hasn't rep- responded to that tweet from the showrunner uh, saying yeah. that he would love to team up, but um, maybe someone else will and come on board because I do yes, think that's my hope. Yeah, I do. I, like, I love the idea of the evil superhero. There's a great comic. I think it's from like 2007, 2008, or something called Irredeemable, which is basically like the boys uh it's uh, is the boys based on an ip if not it's definitely inspired by irredeemable i, I think so. it was based on a comic i feel yeah. like I heard. oh it is based on, okay cool yeah um and uh yeah it is it is a cool idea that that i would love to see fleshed out in a video game infamous played along with uh some of this kind of thing as well but um but yeah it's uh it's sick and i would love to see a video game version of it one day kojima it, sorry Pete. <clears throat> Yeah, I was just going to say, like, off the top of the dome, is there a team that would be right for this? And I, I feel like Quebec, Mon- uh, not Quebec, Montreal, uh, Idos, Idos Montreal, uh, like, probably the closest to the to making something that I can imagine a framework working with their um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy game. Because I think that the <clears throat> the key to it is actually. The interesting thing about it is character building and relationships because uh, even if you're a bad, good guy, you're like when you're out just fighting things, it's the same as fighting things when you're a good guy in a video game. Like the fighting is not the interesting thing. It's actually about, yeah, the relationships, a team dynamic, which the boys have a super fucked up, like we're all (laughs) a group and we hate each other, but we have to do this. And we're all trying to like bring each other down. And like, it's just wonderfully icky politics. And I think that, yeah, like the guardians style uh, group, uh, team sort of thing. If you just if you just made all of them awful people, then you you definitely got this game. Um, Min- Minecraft the boys, Lucy. That'd be that. I'd love that. Absolutely. I'm so <laughs> down. I'll I'll build the sets. I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Nice. You could do just, it could be a Sims expansion pack where it's just, yes. it, because, because again, it's all about them just hanging out at headquarters, just uh, being fucking Which awesome. Which just comes in and beats up your Sims. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> just running so fast through your Sims that oh, they explode. God, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Well, we'll wait for more news about whether that's going to happen uh, and also what Kojima is working on next. But Pete, whatever that is, it's probably not going to be happening in Quebec. It probably won't be happening in Quebec uh, because uh, video game companies in Quebec will be impacted by a new controversial language law that is being introduced uh, by the state. The Bill Bill 96 uh, is uh, being implemented to strengthen the French-speaking province's uh, 
language laws to ensure that French is the main language spoken in business and healthcare. And there's a huge game development scene in Quebec, uh, the province, yes, I do use it. Um, and uh, they're freaking out because a lot of talent fly into the country to, to make massive games there. Um, there's, uh, oh, I've lost, I've lost that part, but the Eidos Montreal are obviously up there. The Warner Brothers studio that's making Gotham Knights is there. Uh, Behavior, who do Dead by Daylight, Game Loft do the Asphalt series of mobile games, uh, and Ubisoft have a studio there as well. There's 11,000 people employed in Quebec uh, in the games industry, mm. and not all of them speak French, and soon they're going to have to <laughs> because the business will be run in French. Um, obviously, people will continue to speak English to each other, but uh, all business directive, all, uh, all the whole business will be run in French. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I totally understand that uh, directive, uh, but people within the industry are saying that there's already... Uh, you know, this bill hasn't passed, but there's already uh, concern within the industry. People are starting to pack their bags. Um, 19, like Quebec has a uh, similar tax break incentive to what Australia used to have and I believe is about to re-implement something like, I think it's 37 and 37% if the game is in French and thirty percent if it isn't. Australia oh, right. has wait if the game if the game itself is a like a features French okay, the yeah. French language. It doesn't need to be uh, like doesn't need to be French first, but it needs to feature the French language yep. to be played uh, in French. It, they get a 30, 37 percent uh, tax rebate um, and thirty percent if it's not that. Uh, but they're not going to make any games there if they can't get the staff in there to make the games. <laughs> I so I'm going to say something that may be controversial, and and uh, like I don't want this to be perceived as an attack on the French. Well, I'm sorry, I'll get do you, you need bigger face for this. Yeah, you, uh, you're, you're about to, to be you, you're just have for to, the cancel the cancel highlight fucking, cuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, full full screen. This Lucy doesn't want to be in a shot with this uh, next <laughs> sentence at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck the French. No. Um, <laughs> the, um, you got out just. You got out just in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. What? Oh, this is interesting. I t I totally get what they're doing. I understand yep. why it's important. Uh, the exception being that it's like a province, and that's where I'm like, yeah. oh, this is a bit rough for a pro. Like, I understand if this is France. If this yep. is if you're a game company in Lyon or something, it's like we need to maintain. <laughs> but you're you're technically like a. You're French in another country. And so it like, and again, I, I'm not going to minimize this at all with this next set. Lucy, run out you of just, you This just, is basically you just Israel and Palestine in video oh, games. Oh, no. Where it's like you've got this small province in the middle of another place. And then it's like, okay, well, how are we going to negotiate these two things? And the idea of it being like you move to Canada because you're like, yeah, Canada's fucking sick. And then you live in Quebec and now you're trying to make video games. And then suddenly it's like every email you get is just just French. That would be sure you might know some, but it's like this is this is one of those things where it's like, oh, this is this is a hard line to take, I feel like. And if you're gonna lose a lot of talent, is it worth it uh when it comes to things that as opposed to like can't can't Quebec just be this cool place that's way more he <coughs> heavily weighted towards uh French, French customs, French culture uh than the rest of Canada, but at the same time, uh when you get an email from your boss saying, Hey, uh, everyone gets Friday off. You actually understand what the email is, Lucy. <laughs> yeah, I've I've sufficiently uh, turn, made everyone turn on me, so you can now <laughs> say whatever you want, and you will be the hero. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to keep it not controversial. Um, I yeah, no, I completely agree. I think um, I think it's a really it's risky. I I um, obviously don't know much about Quebec. I do know about the fact that it's just like a bunch of French people in Canada and it's just created this culture of just a lot of French speaking. But um, I agree. I think if it was France, I would be more like, well, yeah, for sure. But it just, it does seem a bit risky for Canada and like, you know, like cause if it's bringing in a lot of business, it's, I feel like that's a risky play to, if it's potentially going to drive a bunch of big game companies out of there, then um, 
I don't 1. know. One point seven five billion dollars of revenue per year. Yeah, mm. that's a risk. That seems um, that seems like a big risk for something that like. Yeah, if you wanted to bring like a little more French into it, but to force everybody to have to speak French, like like you said, if you're just working there and suddenly one day every email you get sent is now in French, like obviously you can translate it, but like does it then go to like business meetings? Like are you then going to be in your meetings and like everyone's speaking French and you're the one person? Like having tried to learn French in year seven, like oh yeah, it's Sacre a lot. It's, yeah. it's a lot. Like every piece of furniture is a different gender. Like it's a big language to learn. It's a lot. So yeah. like um. To be able to to tell to tell people like you can either like you can't work here anymore because you can have to suddenly learn French or like just even if you just have to leave because you cannot speak French like that seems like you said that kind of revenue and it's that's a risk and also yeah. like I there are way more games that come out of Quebec that we play than come out of France that we play uh, obviously yeah. Ubisoft is based in France so there is like they have there's an ownership, but I think of Quebec way more as a hub for games, particularly like double and triple A titles that come out uh, more so than France proper uh, outside of Ubisoft. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, there must be some, uh, there must be really seeing a slip because, because I guess, I guess the other part of this that the, the counter to my argument is that I don't necessarily feel comfortable with the idea that like English is just this dominant language. Mm. Uh, like I go to Europe and like, I remember the first time I went to Europe and I was just like, oh, I don't need to learn anything because everyone here speaks <laughs> English. Uh, like I, I don't need to, I can engage with the like one sentence of everything that I, I know. And like, I could say thank you to everyone and try to do an accent every time to feel like a local. But other than that, it's like, I don't need to do anything because everyone speaks English. I don't necessarily yeah. feel comfortable with the idea of like, oh, everyone has to do it. But at the same time, if that's how it's already been, a hard pivot back to French is, um, uh, seems potentially a little le drastic. <laughs> yeah, although I think French is one of the most spoken languages in the world. It is? I think so. I, I'm pretty sure I remember hearing that because I would always be like, that's so random. Like, out of all the languages I would think about, I would never think of France, like French, but I think it is. I'm going to look it up now. Yeah, there, there are, I mean, there are other nations. I can't imagine it's bigger than Spanish, though. No, it's not. It's English, Chinese, like Mandarin Chinese, Hindi, Spanish, Arabic. French is seventh, which is still pretty impressive. Okay. Totally nah, because... When you're down at seven, there's only like yeah. eight languages. Hey, come on. Uh, abo <laughs> it, it's above. It is above <laughs> Russian, uh, German, Japanese. And then there's a bunch of other countries where you're like, okay, well, this is, this is not nearly as impressive. But still. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's, it's kind German. of big. But yeah, come not on. big enough to be like at the level of English, I feel, in terms of like worldwide, everybody kind of knows it sort yep. of thing. Uh, yeah. Arwab says French was the international language until the English took over. There you go. Yeah. And that's what we do. Uh, okay. <laughs> the French should have won, shouldn't they? They should have won. Whatever, whatever the war was, they should have <laughs> won it. Whichever wars. Napoleon yeah. should have done better. I'll tell you Absolutely. what, they would have won it if they all spoke English, though. Uh, I can't give you that much. Uh, okay, good. Uh, I'm so sorry. Would have known. <laughs> uh, I'm just watching a potato be fucking disappointed in me. <laughs> <laughs> like literally a head bow, yeah. shaking his head. <laughs> uh, incredible. Uh, uh, okay, cool. Uh, and then moving on with the uh, final story this week. Uh, so there was the Nintendo Direct. Uh, it was actually technically a Direct Mini, but I feel like it was packed with stuff for a Mini. Like there have been Directs that have been shorter than the Direct Mini. <clears throat> yeah. Um, like, yeah. And like, and when I saw Mini, I was like, oh, it'll just be like, obscure titles or something but they i mean they talked about sparks of hope and yeah like there's a Talk bunch of big stuff exactly yeah they talked about a ton of stuff uh i i just wanted to point out some of the things that caught my eye lucy did you watch the the direct mini no i did not catch it but i've read all about all the different games and are, are so. you a nintendo fan uh, just first um time? yeah i mean i've always loved um mario games growing up um so that's always been there mario kart specifically um and then obviously Animal Crossing was was um, a big one. Any sort of Switch, like I, I'm really into the Switch games. Yeah, cool. uh, I'm trying to get more into them to make my purchase more warranted. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I I I definitely dabble into some Nintendo. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so uh, there was a ton of stuff uh, announced. Uh, I was 
I just wanted to point out some of the things that caught my eye, but um, I'll go through the list. If you, if either of you have anything particularly that you want to say about any of the other ones, just interrupt me, yell over the top of me, preferably mm-hmm. in French. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, uh, the expansion uh, that is out now, uh, got its final sort of like uh, trailer stuff there. Nier Automata is coming to the Switch, which has been something that fans have wanted for a very long time. It's a game that really feels like it will do well there. Um, there's a very cool puzzle game called uh Lorelei and the Laser Eyes which just has uh I mean as a as a art artist game design uh aficionado Lucy uh does yes. does this strike you because it certainly caught my attention oh uh, yeah I thought it was really fascinating I mean I love a murder mystery I'm, I'm all into that um and I just love I thought um obviously like in the trailer it like cuts to like a more nostalgic like retro design at one point mm-hmm. like it kind of looked like a uh, golden eye kind of vibes and um that's really. It looks really cool. I think it's a really interesting art style. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it's cool. Love yeah. it, 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 a weird um, spin-off for the Gilmore Girls, but you know, mm. I think it'll be interesting to see how Lorelai <laughs> fares. Yeah. In yeah. this scenario, without you know a cafe to swing by and kind of talk through the issues, it's like once Absolutely. her daughter moved out and went to college and started her own life, she just went like hard <laughs> midlife crisis. I'm becoming a noir detective. <laughs> like, uh, Super Bomberman R2 uh, coming to the Switch. Mega Man Battle Legacy Collection also coming. Pac Man World Repack also coming to the Switch. Uh, there's another game called Blanc, which is a, a black and white. Uh, Oh, cute. Puzzle game. Yeah, that looked very adorable as well. Um, we got a tease for Return to Monkey Island, which I'm very excited for, and apparently the Switch is the um, first console that we'll be coming to outside of PC. Uh, but Mario and Rabbit Sparks Hope got a big look in, and it uh, looks pretty fantastic. Uh, the I'm being so excited for this game. Pete, I know you love the original as well. Like this was like it was like Zelda. Mario Odyssey and this for me on the Switch that were like the reasons to pick that that console up in the first yep. year, uh, and uh, we got a, a bit a bit more information about this. The Sparks are so a new rabbits that you're supposed to be saving and collecting. Uh, Bowser uh, and some and some baddies will also uh, be available for your team as well. But overall, there was a six minute gameplay demo that they released. Um, the game looks more gorgeous than ever. Um, it looks really great. There are some really cool puzzle stuff that I don't remember as much in that overworld thing, Pete. Do you remember? There were there, there were some tiny, tiny little like pathing puzzles mm-hmm. in that overworld from memory right, and things yeah. that you would unlock with like as you progressed. You could go back to that little hub, yes, and and spend stuff. But I, I really don't remember. It was so not a part of the game that it looks far more significant here, totally. and, and yeah. like that will be memorable here. Yeah, um, which. Cause, yeah, if there was stuff, it is like on the edges of my memory where I remember fighting Banana Kong for uh, <laughs> Banana Kong Rabbit totally. for like four days. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but the gameplay, again, just looking fantastic. I like that they've sort of removed the grid-based system and it's kind of like this free room within, a, within an area looks really cool. So overall, I'm just so psyched for this. Lucy, did you play the first Mario and Rabbids game? No, I haven't. I've definitely seen a lot of stuff about it um, growing up, but uh, no, I haven't played it. But it looks really good. I'm I'm already just from the footage on the screen. Like it looks really good. Do you? It looks do you like, like it's going to be um, very popular. Do you like this sort of tactics XCOM strategy style thing? Um, sometimes it depends. It depends on the game, but um, yeah, no, I think I'm more when it comes to Mario. I'm more like Mario Kart, Mario original Mario Brothers yeah, cool. kind of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it looks really good, and the art style amazing. Yeah, yeah, very, looks, very Mario, yeah. very beautiful. Like you said, it looks it looks really good, phenomenal. And like the whole world building already, like just from what we can see, um, looks really exciting. They've packed a ton. Uh, they're really pushing the power of the Switch, I think, on this because a lot of the times you see Switch games more recently, and it's like, oh, this looks, this is consoles really showing its age. Whereas here, I'm like, no, mm-hmm. this kind of looks like a proper console game, and that's exciting. Yeah, um, and yeah, so much of it is in art design right like the style of this was always it's mario so they Mm. always look good on nintendo consoles just because they're they're not super detailed they're Mm -hmm. just iconic caricatures and so colorful and i i feel like even just in this demo that we saw a trailer that we saw there's way more variety um and and more particle stuff going on like Mm -hmm. i mean we see in basically every scene snow leaves falling light 
kind of with dust going through mm-hmm. it. Um, stuff that's just like, it must be, uh, they've clearly done a very good job of looking at the limitations of the system and going like, here's how to push it in all the directions that we can to make it feel really modern because it yeah it looks phenomenal and it looks like they've got way more variety than that first game as well totally. so yeah yeah the first g- and the first game was brilliant but like it's really coming off like proof of concept if this executes in the way that it looks like it's going to and i'm so excited for that uh yeah. little noah scion of paradise uh was uh it was a fantasy rpg uh that's downloadable uh, as of right now rail guard is a train uh shipping industrial sort of thing uh there are a couple of other rpgs sonic frontiers then popped up um lucy do you have do you have a opinions on sonic b opinions on sonic frontiers is sonic near and dear to your heart um yeah i used to like sonic grow away when i was little i think i got like free versions of the game from like something as a kid i never got like my parents were very cheap on video games as a child but i did definitely got like a free version of like more of the 2d Mm. sonic game growing up and i used to love it i loved the feeling of moving around so i I was obsessed with that game but um and i've seen some game footage in the past of just like playthroughs of more like 3d sonic games i don't know which exactly which ones but i always thought the concept of him being in like a more of a third person 3d like moving around the screen sort of thing mm-hmm. i thought was always really interesting so this looks really good i think this would be really satisfying to play and i've always had a little bit of a soft spot for sonic so this looks exciting i mean this it's- game is so like the, I, I am so fascinated to see how this is going to turn out because every yeah. time they show something i'm like what the fuck <laughs> like how what, how how did you arrive at this decision and the and the what the fuck moment in this i thought we weren't going to get one in this trailer and then three quarters of the way through the trailer you see that you can as sonic go through a portal and go to uh they said it a, a new a new area called cyberspace um so they <laughs> came up with the term and this is different sort of like they look like hard platforming challenge levels which is cool i'm thinking of them potentially like the dungeons um uh, or the shrine sorry in uh, legend of zelda since the game is clearly trying to ape uh legend of zelda breath of the wild in some way um but in one of them is sonic green hill zone and it is like you took you already it's like you made a game and then with a terrible boring art design as the primary look and then you put in it the game that people wanted it, it like <laughs> in the bright, colorful, fun Sonic, but he's running around in a sort of like third person, like Lucy was saying, third person 3D uh, way. And you you built that in there and we're like, oh no, this is just like a small area that you'll be able to visit. Where this actually looks like, that stuff looks, looks great. like Mario Odyssey to me. That looks like yeah. fun to do. It's wild. And so that was the moment where I was like, you've, you, you fucked the ratio. You should have had a you should have had a Breath of the Wild little portal that you visit and not the other way around. The one I mean the game is called Frontiers. I do wonder if the this uh the big open world area that they've been excited to show everyone and there's been a lot of backlash about how it looks um is actually not that big. It is just the a hu- like a like hub zone. The hub to get through to the worlds. Um yep. and instead of building a like top down overworld, they've built a three D overworld that you can kind of like test out your your moves in. Yep. But it's really about jumping into those levels and getting a good score or time in those levels or something like that. Or just finishing them and, and progressing the plot. But maybe. Yeah. yeah. But uh, either way, like I am I cannot wait to see how this game turns out. I am fascinated. Um, <laughs> it's like a car crash. Uh, and then uh, the two other things that I just wanted to um, point out, Disney Dreamlight Valley, which we I think we saw in the PlayStation State of Play was the first reveal for it. And we got a, a new trailer for it here, a little more information that um, Dreamlight Valley has been sort of taken over by some dark curse, bad shit, and you need to come and sort of like revitalize this area. It's a life sim uh, with lots of different zones themed around the the Disney stuff. Lucy, I feel like this could be up your alley. You love the life sims. Are you a Disney fan? Um, I am a Disney fan. I'm not like a Disney adult or anything intense, but I do fair. love Is a Disney, Disney movie. Thing? Yeah, it is. It's a Disney adult. Yeah. It's the people that like get the lifetime pass to Disneyland and they just spend every waking moment of their lives at Disneyland and they're very intense about 
all the lore of Disney and like what things you can do, all the little secrets you can go to. Yeah. And if you ever talk about Disney in the wrong way, they'll they'll have you on a chopping block. It's very yeah, right. intense. Disney I'm not like that. Some serious yes. cult stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Um, but no, I do love Disney. I love Disney movies. Um, this looks really interesting. I've never played like a Disney. I know there's a few games that have like Disney characters, but then you're doing other stuff that you wouldn't really expect in a Disney game. Like this looks really interesting. I um. I wouldn't have normally gone for this, but seeing stuff about it, it makes me wonder maybe I should because it looks it looks really cool. I, I I love a live sim, as you said. So um, no, I'm interested. I, I'm worried that it might be too childish mm-hmm. for me. Maybe is it is it more aimed at children? It looks a bit. I mean, it's Disney, so like obviously, but yeah, um, I, I think mean, it's, yeah. it's not too. I think it's yeah. straddling that line of like mm. it's not necessarily a kids kids game, um, but it's not going to have the potentially it's not going to have the depth of something like Stardew Valley or um, yeah yeah no but it does look interesting I'd definitely be interested to like watch other people play it and if they seem to like it I'd be down yeah yeah I think it I think it's like an Animal Crossing light yes Mm. really yeah. And, and and like probably heavily themed hub zones, which we see in this. Like there's these different mini games. Like you can go cook mm. with Remy the Rat from Ratatouille and stuff. I um I am super keen for this, not because I'm a Disney perv, but because uh, <laughs> my kids uh, Disney like, pervs are total Disney pervs. Like they yeah, yeah, they've yeah, got yeah. the lifetime subscription to the thing. They buy the five thousand cocktail on the six thousand Disney Star Wars cruise, uh, which is something the Dolphin Pants just said. Um, uh, no, my kids are getting into Disney films, and I think that this could be one of those games where it's like it's hard to find it's hard to find kids games that don't make you as an adult want to throw the controller through the television uh, <laughs> it, of just it's so inane and so boring. And I feel like this could mm-hmm. do a really good balance of like, I can help you like pick where you want to put the house and stuff, but they'll be able to like hang out with these characters, play these sort of like cooking mini games, make a lot of decisions that I can help them with and stuff uh, while playing something that looks good. Uh, that potentially is a little more engaging than some of the like more traditional kids games uh, that that they've been dabbling with. So, yeah, I, I got more excited by this trailer uh, for that. So I am definitely looking forward to that one coming out. Uh, and then the final thing that caught my eye is another life sim, and this is Harvest Harvest Ella. Uh, so this one's coming from Square Enix. It's, uh, it's basically like it looks like a cross between Animal Crossing and your more traditional uh, like Final Fantasy RPG uh, JRPG style game. You take over this town. Um, you're collecting materials, farming, crafting things, decorating, all that cool life sim stuff. Uh, there are f- all the normal seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, and then there's a fifth <laughs> season Ooh. called Quietus, aka the season of death. And oh, during shit. the season of death, I believe it's is then when you go full like Final Fantasy JRPG, go out and fight things. Um, which I've always, I've never really been able to drag myself through most of the more traditional JRPGs just because they're so long, there's so much repetition, so much grinding. I'm sure that there will be a lot of that in this, but there's something about the idea that you're kind of going off and just purpose doing these battles, then coming back to your home, building, crafting, fishing, doing the Animal Crossing style thing that makes it way more appealing to me. And normally this is not something that I would necessarily be drawn to, but I saw the trailer for this and I was like, I can see myself actually spending quite a bit of time building out this town, going on cool battles to hopefully get more mats to bring back. It's like Monster Hunter meets Animal Crossing meets Final Fantasy. And I saw a lot of hype about it online. Uh, Lucy, does any of this uh, boil your spud? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, de- definitely. I, um, I, yeah, it sort of reminds me kind of like in Stardew Valley, if you guys have, have played that, it's sort of like you do all your farming, but then at nighttime you can like go into the caves mm. and there's all these monsters in the caves and you can kill them. So it's kind of like that. Like I, I love, um, I love the idea of mixing that sort of just like farming and doing the, all the chill stuff because I love a chill game. But then also sometimes I do like battling, but I didn't. I wouldn't want to play something sort of where you're just like like Elden Ring where you're constantly like fighting all these bosses and stuff like that. But the idea of like mixing the two together where you can just like do all your farming, chill, and then go and fight all these monsters and then come back and chill. Like I think that looks it looks really good and the world design um, looks really beautiful. Um, I mean, sorry, Elden no, Ring that's... already game of the year for me and Pete. But I would say, yeah. <laughs> if you if you, if you could, yeah, that was a part of Elden Ring that they made even bigger, which is just uh, like Animal Crossing, like you've got a sweet little town that you're building yep. out, would be fucking dope. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah. good. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. <laughs> um, Pete, uh, I feel like this isn't necessarily your thing, even though you do dabble with a bit of Animal Crossing. Harvestella. Yeah. Like, I think, um, I think you're right in, like, having uh, the option to do different things is always nice in these kinds of video games mm-hmm. um to jump into it and go like oh, i feel like going and smashing some monsters for a bit you go and do that but it's not like the only thing you can do in the game yep. i feel like i get fatigued with particularly jrpgs when it's like there's one way forward and it's grinding these shitty little mobs so that i'm strong enough to fight the shitty big mobs um having something meditative to do yes and constructive to do it is always really satisfying because there's a sense of accomplishment at the end of the session no matter what even if you go and destroy it afterwards it's like well i built a thing i started a farm i'm like i'm making progress over here even if i'm not making progress down the path of killing the final boss yeah um so i i do like that aspect of it and and I might check it out because of it. It's, it's, it, I think it will depend if it's a, if it releases in a really quiet window, mm. um, that's where this kind of thing could like end up in front of me. But, uh, if it's, you know, holiday season and there's a million big games coming out, it probably won't, it probably won't get an install. It's, uh, yeah, well, it's Sorry, coming Carlos out, Stella. it's coming out November 4th. So I uh, don't think it's getting an install for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, the, the other thing, uh, someone in chat who was at scrolling back, scrolling back, uh, was said that it looks like the four, the third act or the, uh, towards the end of, um, fable three. And that's so spot on in that it has that fable, like even just the perspective of most of these sort of like sim farming farm style games are often like top down pixely sort of things much more cutesy and this i yeah i this uh, fable had that sort of like i really have a town that i'm i'm building out and that was the vibe that i was getting so yeah very exciting uh so yeah so lots of cool stuff uh through the nintendo direct i think it was really positive and i do think that nintendo need a positive one because it has been quite a while since any big mainline nintendo game has come out and the switch with its age and everything, I just feel like I've seen a lot of people starting to go like, what, like what's happening with the switch at the moment? It's showing its age. I've had it for a while. I haven't got the huge big King hits on there. Uh, and they came out with some strong stuff here that will hopefully carry them across the line towards the end of the year before we get uh, breath of the wild two next year and whatever else is on the cards for Nintendo. Uh, a few more release dates, uh, just around us out. Mario and rabbit sparks of hope is coming out October 20th. Uh, monkey Island coming to console first uh, on the switch and uh, on Monday, July 11th, Peter Burns, the halo infinite co-op campaign beta is going to be available. Yeah, I I missed that cuz I I was traveling. But is that an open beta or is that part of the is that part of the flight? Subscribers to Game doesn't... Pass will be able to try it out. Okay, cool. Um, and I nice. think that if you're in maybe if you're in the flight before then uh you'll be able to uh check it out as well. Uh The Sims 4 High School Years uh is a pack that's got announced and is coming out on July 28th and uh according to a Twitter account Agnomenti Lumia whatever, uh, says that uh, they say that Skull and Bones, the uh, Ubisoft joint that has basically dead at sea, uh, is coming out on November 8th. So, Pete, you'll have four days to play Harvestella before the big get holiday game Skull and Bones drops. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, but you, what you won't need to worry about is playing Sea of Stars this year, uh, which is the follow-up to The Messenger. Uh, that's been delayed into 2023 as developer Sabotage Studios announced this week that they needed a bit more time to polish things up. And that is literally all the video game news that happened this week. There's nothing else you need to know. 